Welcome to the Junos REST API Overview Module. By the end of this module, you should be able to describe Junos REST API capabilities. Representational State Transfer, or REST, provides a standard method for clients to access data objects that are stored on a REST API server. A REST API client communicates with a REST API server using HTTP GET and POST methods to execute remote procedure calls or RPCs that retrieve and manipulate data that is stored on the server. A REST API client uses URLs and the HTTP request body to identify the data to access and operations to perform. Representational state transfer is considered to be stateless because no client context is stored on the REST API server. Each request from a client must contain all the information necessary to process the request. All session state is maintained by the client. A REST API can be accessed using any program or programming languages capable of generating HTTPS requests. Tools like a web browser, Postman, or the curl command line utility are commonly used. Code libraries have been developed for many programming languages that simplify the generation of REST API requests. One example is the requests package for Python. Junos versions 14.2 and later support a REST API that is enabled using device configuration. This example demonstrates using the command line curl utility to issue a Junos get software information RPC request and displays the XML formatted HTTP response. Because REST is stateless, each request must include authentication information. Many organizations have existing network management and monitoring systems that are based on REST. One benefit of the Junos REST API is that it enables Junos platforms to be quickly integrated. Other benefits of the Junos REST API include the ability to manage a device without using network configuration protocol or netconf, the ability to retrieve device data in multiple formats, the availability of a REST API explorer and SSL support. After the REST service is enabled in the Junos configuration, a light TPD web server launches and begins listening for incoming connections. When a request is received, Light TPD processes the HTTP GET or POST request and passes the data onto the Mod Juice plugin. The Junos User Interface Scripting Environment, or Juice, is invoked to process the Junos RPC and the included authentication information. The Junos RPC combined with the authentication information is forwarded to the Junos Management Daemon or MGD process. The MGD returns the data back to Juice, which reformats the data for the Lite TPD web server, which then passes the response back to the REST client. Note that the Lite TPD server, Mod Juice plugin, and Juice run inside a Junos CH root environment for increased security. A CH root environment on Unix-like operating systems ensures that processes cannot access files outside of a designated directory structure. Enable the Junos REST API using the configuration command as shown in this example. The port command is optional. The Junos REST API HTTP port is TCP port 3000 by default. You can assign a port value from 1024 through 65535. You can also configure the IP addresses used by the Light TPD server to listen for incoming connections. The Junos OS REST API currently supports IPv4. Accessing the Junos REST API using HTTP is only recommended for lab testing. Each REST API client request includes a username and password for basic HTTP authentication. Using HTTP, the username and password are sent unencrypted. To enable the Junos REST API over HTTPS, generate a self-signed SSL certificate. Certificates signed by a Trusted Certificate Authority, or CA, are also supported. A server certificate configuration option is used to identify the SSL certificate to use. 
You can also customize the HTTPS Junos REST API listening port. Junos uses TCP port 3443 by default. You can restrict access to the REST API server by configuring allowed source IP addresses. You can also limit the number of simultaneous connections. Welcome to the Querying the Junos REST API module. By the end of this module, you should be able to explain how to query the Junos REST API. The structure of a basic GET request is shown in the example. The GET request includes the Junos GET interface information RPC in the URL. The Junos REST API supports HTTP GET and POST methods. HTTP GET requests generally include all required data in the URL, while POST requests include additional data in the message body. Creating queries in a web browser can be a useful method to quickly gather information from a remote device. You can create a series of bookmarks that can be used to quickly check the status of a device. It can also be useful when developing web-based network management tools that have integrated web browsers. When you access the Junos REST API using a web browser, you are prompted for a username and a password using HTTP basic authentication. The web browser displays the REST API query results as an HTML page. This is because web browsers typically add an accept colon text slash HTML request header asking for HTML data from the REST API server. Without such a request header, the default response format is XML. A web browser is typically used for simple HTTP GET queries. For more complex queries, use tools like Curl, Postman, and the REST API Explorer. Curl is a command line application that is capable of generating data using many different formats, including HTTP. This example demonstrates creating a basic curl query. Note that if only a URL and no data payload is provided, curl uses the HTTP GET method by default. The dash K option bypasses self signed certificate warnings, while the dash U option is used to provide a username and password for authentication. The response is XML formatted data. This example shows the curl equivalent of the Juno CLI show interfaces GE0 slash 0 slash 0 terse command. The curl request return data format is XML by default. You can use the format equals text attribute to specify the return data format as text. Because format equals text is an attribute, it must be preceded with the at sign. Other possible formats include HTML, JSON, and XML. The RPC and any RPC parameters are separated with question marks and parameters are separated using ampersands. The terse parameter does not accept a value. It is possible to include multiple Junos RPCs in a REST API request using the post HTTP method. The feature is especially useful if you want to modify configuration using the REST API because you can lock, load, commit, and unlock device configuration using one HTTP request. To execute multiple RPCs, simply place them in sequence in the body of the HTTP request as shown in the example. The HTTP POST method is used when a curl query is performed using the dash D option. Additionally, you can specify a stop on error parameter, question mark stop on error equals one in the URL that halts further execution of RPCs if one of the RPCs in the request fails. Junos uses trace options to generate additional logging information for a configured service. You can configure trace options flags for light TPT, juice, or all. You can only enable one flag at a time. Since the light TPD and juice processes are executed in a ch root environment, the processes do not have access to the standard junos var log directory. 
Trace options log files for these processes are located in the slash var slash ch root slash rest api slash var slash log directory on the device. Welcome to the REST API Explorer module. By the end of this module, you should be able to explain how to use the REST API Explorer. To enable the REST API Explorer, issue the Set System Services REST Enable Explorer Configuration Mode command. After you commit the configuration, open a web browser and navigate to the host name or IP address of your Junos device appending the configured port number after a colon. The default port number is 3000 for HTTP and 3443 for HTTPS. You must enter a username and password before submitting a request. The option to execute a single RPC is selected by default when you open the REST API Explorer. Queries sent to the REST API can be submitted as either HTTP GET or HTTP POST requests. The Junos REST API Explorer supports outputting data in XML, JSON, and plain text formats. Input the Junos RPC in the URL field. Provide a username and password and click Submit. Once you click the Submit button, the REST API Explorer generates the HTTP request. The request details are shown in the Request Headers field. This is the data that is sent to the Junos REST API server. The equivalent curl request is also generated. The Response Headers field contains the contents of the HTTP header returned from the Junos REST API server. If the request was successful, the Response Body field contains the RPC response from the Junos REST API server. To perform multiple RPCs in one HTTP request, select the Multiple RPCs option. Executing multiple RPCs enables an additional option that halts RPC execution if an error is encountered. If the Stop on Error checkbox is not selected and an error is encountered, the REST API server reports the error but continues executing the next RPC in the list. In the example, the Get Interface Information and the Get BGP Summary Information RPCs are executed. For better visibility, they are separated by an empty line. The response body shows the output of both RPCs. The displayed string is the boundary string used to separate one RPC response from the next. You want to automate audits of your network device configurations using a script. You need to verify that services like Telnet and FTP are not enabled in the device configurations. These services are considered unsecure and must be disabled. The script should display a warning message if a device has one of these services enabled. Use the Junos REST API Explorer to determine the HTTP method and the correct Junos RPC to use. The example executes a single RPC. The POST method is used because the getConfigRPC is included in the request body. This method enables you to specify a subtree filter for the RPC and retrieve just the interesting portion of the device configuration. The returned XML configuration data is displayed in the response body field. An automation script examines the returned XML data to determine which services are enabled on the device. Now that you have determined the correct Junos RPC, a script can be created. The example uses Python to create the automation script. The Python script is saved as networkaudit.py on a management workstation. In this example, the Python script is run. A warning message is displayed showing that the 172.25.11.2 device has one of the prohibited services enabled. You modify the device configuration, run the script again, and no longer see the warning message displayed.